Welcome to episode 11 of the Cloth Nappy Geek podcast. On this episode, I'm going to chat to Jess, who is the owner of So Sustainable. Jess is still at school, but has already started her own business, designing and making a range of eco products after teaching herself to sew. She really is a very talented and inspirational young woman. joined by Jess who is the lovely young woman behind the band called So Sustainable who make a range of eco products. Hi Jess how are you today? Hello I'm doing great thank you it's lovely to join you. Ah thank you. (laughs) So first of all let's talk about your sewing skills when and how did you learn to sew? So um, a couple of years ago when I was 12 I really wanted to get a sewing machine and start sewing So I saved up birthday and Christmas money and I bought myself a sewing machine. Um, For a while, I was sewing random, pretty useless things um, from books and things. And then I kind of wanted to do something a bit more that meant I could sew a lot more often. And then I came up with the business. Amazing. Um, So have you, all your products are sort of like eco-conscious, like eco-swaps that people can make. Have you grown up in an sort of eco-conscious household or is this something you've sort of learned about and researched yourself as you've got a bit older? So I'd say lots of it is my own research. So a couple of years ago, I came across um, CSP Mm -hmm. and I wanted to give them a go and I did. And then through researching um, cloth pads, it opened up a world of other things that uh, lots of waste and lots of facts about waste and then now as a family I'd say we are quite um, environmentally conscious and there's a lot of more swaps that we've made in our house because of me. Ah great so you've been sort of the catalyst to making your whole household more eco-friendly. Yeah, yeah that is good. Um, so my generation often talk about the next generation as, as in you um, and how you're going to make these sustainable swaps and be more eco-conscious than my generation has been. Um, no pressure for you guys, but amongst <laughs> your sort of peers, how true do you think that is? Do you think your friends are more eco-conscious? So I'd say it's um, quite split. Um, I'd say as a whole, people of my sort of age are more open-minded to learn about issues in want to make changes but I'd say at the same time there is lots of problems like fast fashion and lots Mm. of useless products in my opinion anyway that are really marketed to people my age so I think it's quite hard that way and I think a lot of people still buy those clothes and things but I'd say on a whole they are trying to make changes and I think I've got quite a lot of friends who are equally passionate about making them so I'd say it's quite split but I think on the whole they're more inclined to want to make these changes yeah okay I think my feeling is some of it is about awareness like you're marketed to really heavily your generation compared to mine because the the internet is now a thing which it wasn't so much when I was growing up and I think yeah you're just pushed products constantly and it's only if you take a step back and you almost need someone to have sort of started that conversation with you so you can take that step back and look at things the way you do and and address that maybe that like fast fashion for example isn't very sustainable to the planet yeah and I think it's people um at my age they when they want to buy things they might not have much money they want to spend and I think it's quite hard to weigh that up so recently I've come much more of a mindset of things that I don't need or I can go without but I think some people don't always think like that and it's quite difficult because if you've got something that's more expensive and something that's really cheap you're gonna often gravitate towards the thing that's cheaper yeah definitely and I think the same for my generation like when you're on maternity leave and maternity pay and stuff um some some of the eco swaps can save an awful lot of money but some of them involve quite a large upfront cost and that can be a bit of a barrier yeah. to people definitely so what was your first conscious eco eco swap was it the CSP that you've mentioned yeah I think it was the CSP um and I looked into it and I really wanted to give it a go so I tried a small um set and I've never looked back in it it was really positive swap I think and it just kick-started all of this like I said and now I continue to use it and I absolutely love it brilliant and do you think that's been your easiest eco swap or do you think there's something else that you've done that's just like a total no-brainer I would say it was surprisingly easy um 
at the start it was quite um seemed like quite a new thing um to be trying but I think that's all because in education when you're taught about these things it's always disposable to push like they're the only option yeah. so I think it was surprisingly easy and I think everyone should give it a go if they are using disposables because it's a no-brainer and I think in our house one of the first swaps we made as a family was reusable kitchen wipe which was really easy um yeah yeah kitchen wipe is an easy one we use um just some old flannels I had knocking around and so it was a zero cost for us as well but yeah definitely an easy one it is a shame that in schools you're taught about um period products just being these disposable items like I didn't know CSP yeah. existed until I'd had my second baby and gone into cloth nappies and it, it's more talked about in that sort of circle um I do think the problem is I guess the 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 small brands like yourself that are talking at making CSP don't have the money to send kits out into schools the way that, you know, these multinationals are so they can be yeah. demonstrated, you know, fighting a, a difficult battle. But it would be nice if they were mentioned in schools when you have your sort of education around that. Yeah. So um, when did you decide to launch your own business? So um, last summer... Um, with one of my friends and our youth project, we set up a plastic free stall um, at kind of local craft fairs and things to educate people and to show that these products exist and to raise a bit of money for the youth project. And for that, I sewed a lot of things and I really, really enjoyed it. I made uh, makeup pads and reusable kitchen wipe. And it was something that I was making that I could carry on making. I thought if, if I turned it into a business, because I did enjoy sewing, but I found I'd kind of run out of things I could make <laughs> so having this purpose to sew and sewing for something that I was passionate about as well was really good yeah that's great good that you had that little project to kind of kick start things for you yeah um what's the first thing you've you've ever made like when you've got your sewing machine so when I got my sewing machine I had this book full of random little things to make to teach you how to sew and it was probably an apron maybe and then I made some very interesting things of my own imagination <laughs> that didn't hold together quite well yeah it's all part of the learning curve I guess <laughs> yeah <laughs> so all of the products that you sell um you make yourself how do you juggle um running your own business and being at school and you must have exams coming up and that kind of stuff yeah so it's quite difficult at the moment. I think I'm still trying to navigate it because my business really took off in lockdown when obviously school's a bit different. Yeah. But over the summer, I had my um, my lovely friend, Bella. She helped a lot because she's um, just learned, like she enjoys sewing as well. So she enjoyed that so she could learn a bit more and doing something together as well was nice. And I think moving forward, I'm trying to get as much stock pre-made as I can which is better for me because I don't have the stress of having to make something to a time scale but also it's better for my customers as well because they get something quicker so it's a win-win yeah definitely yeah and I guess you've got Christmas now to maybe get a bit of a head start yeah and well done Bella for joining the team <laughs> <laughs> So you stock a wide range of eco products. You've got your CSP, you do um, reusable wipes, breast pads, makeup remover pads. What was sort of the driver behind the range of things that you stock? So initially it was swaps that I was making myself or wanted to make as a family. And then when I got the business started, I had a much smaller range of kitchen wipes, scourers, um, makeup pads. And then I was kind of looking at doing lots of research about anything else I could make just to help get these products out there as much as I could and help more people to be able to make the swaps and yeah so that's how it kind of came along and some things took a lot longer than to design than others so my CSP took ages to get right and that was something I wanted to make for a long time but couldn't and then the same with the nappy as well. Yes yeah we should talk about the nappy so you've just launched an all-in-two nappy um what was sort of the must-have parts of the design how did you go about designing that? So when I had my um website launch in the summer I really wanted to stock a cloth nappy um so I did lots of research into smaller brands and other handmade brands I was looking to stock um because I thought it was way too hard and I'd never be able to make it 
And then as my sewing came along a bit in lockdown, having a lot more time to focus on it, I kind of took the plunge, bought some PUL, um, looked at some patterns and it did take a while to get anything even testable. <laughs> and then I finally did. And so from then I kind of worked on getting a design that was my own and that was a bit different. And um, I did that by lots of research, lots of um, listening and looking into what people um, and kind of the cloth nappy community on Instagram, what they, what their um, favorite features of nappies were. And so I came up with um, uh, an all in two nappy that had a wipeable inside. So then it could kind of be a little bit more um, economic because you could just swap in clean inserts instead of changing the whole nappy. And I had that design for a while with just normal um, inserts, sewn a few layers together. And then a lady in my village was testing it. And the only thing that she came with was that it took a while to dry. So then I was thinking of how I could make it quicker to dry, but I still wanted to use kind of bamboo and hemp and cotton natural kind of fibers. So then I made the trifold insert so it could open up to dry a bit quicker. Perfect. You've done really well. You must be really proud of Thank how you. you managed to, yeah, you initially thought I can't do this and now there you are, you've made your own nappy, all of your own design. Yeah. There you I'm go. very proud of my nappy. Yeah, you should be. <laughs> um, so what about the design of your CSP? <laughs> because that's something you use yourself. Um, it must be a bit bit easier in a way to test it and sort of go for the design process for that yeah so originally I was kind of gravitating um towards PUL back and some kind of fleecy top because I think that's what was I used before but then as I got kind of a bit more research into different types of CSP um I found that having like a jersey fabric top would be much nicer and feel better and so that's how I came along with that and then I put fleece on the back because it's water resistant, but then also it doesn't move around and helps to stay a bit more in place when they're being warm. Yeah. So those are the sort of features that you like in your products. So you've added them to the one you've made yourself. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Um, so your success has been really good. Like you, you've set up this business not even that long ago and now you're stopped um, even by larger retailers like the Nappy Lady, um, which is incredibly impressive because I know of other small brands who would like to be and aren't stopped by her, um, particularly brands like yourself where um, it's all handmade by yourself and a lot of people struggle to keep the production up to the sort of level she needs. So you must be really proud of your success and how far you've come in such a short space of time. That was like quite a big achievement and I kind of um, reached out to the nappy ladies on a bit of a whim thinking this is never going to happen and then they just moved to their new warehouse so they had a bit of space I think and they were like yeah we'll place an order and that was so I was so happy and then recently they placed their second order so the stock should be getting there soon. Amazing you've done really well. What do your friends and family think of your success you've Sort of, you know, you're already fairly young, but you've got this sort of entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial business. Um, are they proud of you? Do they they think you're nuts for like <laughs> spending all your time sewing? <laughs> so they're they're really impressed. Um, I think, and they're really supportive. And at the start, my mum would often do a lot of um, well, a bit of the sewing with me when I had wholesale orders and things. And then sometimes get the whole family turning things the right way out in front of the telly. Um, <laughs> And then my mum, she does often, she drives me to the post office to drop off my orders. And um, a, a couple of months ago now, she took me, we drove um, to Ludlow to meet Nicola, who runs Little Twidlets, and visit her shop and see my products in a real life shop. And that was good. So that was really lovely. And so, yeah, they're really supportive and they get involved quite a lot as well oh, that's great it must be so cool going to a shop and seeing your actual things that you've made on display yeah it was so amazing and seeing like um all those products in real life was quite kind of like weird in a way because you don't really see them in the real world almost yeah. <laughs> and also um meeting and speaking to someone who I kind of knew from online and had seen through stories and seeing like them as a real life person was really nice. And Nicola was really lovely. And well done, Mum, for taking you. Mum's always <laughs> the best supports, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. Bless her. 
So what's next for your company? Have you got um, other products you'd like to make or are you hoping to get stocked in more places? What's, what's the plan? So I'm aiming to get kind of more things ready made and ready to go for in the new year um, and more nappies as well because they were um, quite popular, which I was really happy with. Just need to get um, a better popper press because it's hurting my hands a lot at the moment putting all those snaps in. <laughs> um, there is a couple of new products coming and a couple of products that have been developed to make them last longer and perform a little bit better. Um, I am hoping for some new stockists as well. There's a couple I'm talking to at the moment and something very exciting with my nappies and probably across a few of my products as well is a very exciting new print collection which I hope to share kind of spring next year, which is very exciting. Lots of exciting things going on for you then. Yeah. Yeah, very busy you must be. <laughs> um, so finally, if in the future you have your own children, do you think you'll use club nappies on them? Uh, for sure. Um, <laughs> and if I have children and when the time comes, I'll be very excited to. I already have a small collection of um, nappies that have gone slightly wrong that... I'm saving <laughs> um, and I think yeah it's something I'm looking forward to in the future because I think I already know quite a bit more so than many other people my age me and my mum were in the car the other night and we were talking about someone who used cloth nappies and it didn't work for them and I was saying oh maybe they use microfiber, microfiber nappies or maybe they got compression leaks and I was like well how do I know all this random information about nappies <laughs> so yeah I'm definitely definitely going to and I think my brother is going to too when he's looked at them he was like oh wow the print's really cool and things so two people who are going to use club nappies when they're parents for sure brilliant that is good news that's what we always like to hear <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because I, I I didn't even know about club nappies existing until I was pregnant but you're you know considerably younger than me and and already much more informed <laughs> <laughs> You know exactly what you're doing, I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> right, thank you for your time today, Jess. It was really lovely talking to you and hearing more about your business. Um, I'm really excited for the future for you and I'm so impressed with what you've managed to do at such a young age and in such a short space of time as well. Thank you so much for having me. It was a very exciting opportunity. So oh, thank, thank you, you very much. <laughs> Thanks for listening today. I hope you enjoyed this. Please remember to subscribe to my channel and leave a review. And if you know someone else that would find this content really interesting, then please feel free to share it with them as well.